Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. Dang preacher, I'm going to get my shotgun and make a rug out of that damn thing. This is episode 178, recorded December 9th, 2022. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this podcast is about a horror film to release between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will tackle another classic, or not-so-classic, film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. Joining me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. All right. I am. <laughs> also joining us tonight is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, and special effects guru, and all-around nice guy. How you doing, sir? Doing terrific. Uh, got some cryptozoology today. Cryptozoology. Mm -hmm. All right. Also joining us is the marvelous Chad Hunt. There's a there's a pun in there. Uh, comic book artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, the classic era. How you doing, uh, Sir Chad? It's a it's a pleasure to be on this podcast with you, uh, gentlemen Yankees. The Yankees, wow. the Northerners. Uh, I, I, I appreciate you guys letting me on here, even though I am a Yankee. Mm -hmm. so, I'm right uh, there with you. Uh, all right, we're here. <laughs> we're going. Where to do review. you live, Bill? We're going to review. Yeah, but I'm from New York City. Oh, you're York. still a Yankee, yeah. New, New York, York City. City, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Train wreck. We are going to review Creature from Black Lake. This is from 1976, and uh, we want to just pause for a second and thank our friends at Synapse Films, who uh, reached out to us. Or we we yes. got together. We I forgot who reached out to, who, but Look we uh, supplied us with some copies to review. The film is hitting the shelves shortly, if there are any shelves anywhere. Otherwise, go to synapsefilms.com. <laughs> Get the out. best this film has looked in a long time. I think oh this my is, gosh! I'm betting this is the best the film has ever looked. Like if you <laughs> saw it the week it came out, it already looked crappier than what yep, we got yep, to cause, see. Yeah, because they had the preview at first, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we were excited about this. This is a you know one of those B films that would be on a you know on a drive-in, mm -hmm. and uh, also one of those big flop movies. So uh, this is going to be a blast. I'm excited to uh, jump into this one. Are you guys ready to do this? Are you excited yeah. about a Bigfoot movie? Yeah. Hell Roger, yeah. 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 All right. Well, let's get into it. Let's just dive straight in. No, we're going to take a look at the card first. Right? Right? right. I hope so. Yeah. got to find the card. Yes. All That's right. Your opinion. Pick a From card. Any card. <laughs> There's the Black Lake. Uh, there it is. One crane ahead of us. Uh, directed by Joy Ann Hook Jr., uh, written by Jim McCullough Jr. Cast includes uh, John David Carson, Dennis Fimple, Jack Elam, Dub Taylor, Bill Thurman. Film it's locations. Dub. 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 Uh, film locations in Louisiana, Oil, Oil City, Boiser City, and uh, Boiser. Boiser. That's exactly what I said. Boiser. No. Boiser. There's no. Boiser. Boiser. Bossier. Um, it's Bossier. <laughs> filming no, it's date, Bossier. September 1975, released March 11th, 1976. In where? 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 where Bossier City. Bossier <laughs> City. Uh, you, you want me to get it right? Box office, 525,000. Synopsis is two young students from University of Chicago hear the mysterious happenings of Black Lake and armed with a van with scientific equipment set out to solve the mystery. Oh, cutting that's edge gonna... scientific uh, equipment. Mm. Sci yeah, cutting edge. Cutting edge. And all they need is a dog named Scooby. A tape recorder. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's uh, let's get into this. I want to know when you first saw this and what your uh, first reaction is. And who, who chose this? Who chose this? Oh, well, I chose this. So, sort of. I'll start off. How about I start off? I've never started yeah, off yeah, before. Yeah, start off. I saw this. When I put the Blu-ray in the Blu-ray machine this past week or so, um, yep. I I had never seen it before. Um, I just want to start out saying that Synapse has done a wonderful job restoring it. This looked so crisp, so clear. Uh, it was hard to believe that it was, you know, a B picture in the 70s um, from its look. <laughs> Once you get into the story, maybe it exposes mm -hmm. stuff. But it looked and sounded fantastic. And I had 
I had such a good time with this movie. It is it a good movie? Well, we'll find out. We'll debate that, but it doesn't matter. This movie just has it for me. It won me over with the characters because it's a yakety yak movie. It does a lot of talking mm. before it gets to anything good. But I just really liked every single character we encountered, uh, one way or the other. Right? You know, the the two leads, the you know the the sheriff, uh, the you know to Jack Elam and his little buddy that drowns at the beginning of the movie spoilers and then uh even the girls that <laughs> may or may not be of age um all kinds of things i i just had an absolute blast and uh i would say a large part of it if not the cast is the actual blu-ray itself it looked so fantastic that mm -hmm. i didn't mind watching this yeah we see a lot of them right because we watch yeah the yeah. only way we get them is Tubi, and they'll be scratchy as hell and you know, mm -hmm. cloudy, and you can't really see anything. Not this one. This was this this actually was. I would almost use the word pristine. It looked fantastic, mm -hmm. and it. I don't know. It won me over despite itself. How does that sound? All right, let's continue this. Chad, sir, when did you first <laughs> creature from Black Lake, and what was your first impression? Um, I can't remember where I saw it. I, I saw it on TV, I think, numerous times. I'm not sure. But uh, I've seen it a couple of times. And it's always been, uh, I was really into Bigfoot back then, mm -hmm. like everybody else, from Bigfoot on the $6 million man and, yes! and Bigfoot and Wild Boy and all those TV shows. <laughs> uh, anything, it had Bigfoot, Bigfoot and Wild Boy. <laughs> it had Bigfoot on it. I was watching it or reading it. And uh, so, and especially all well, the Boggy Creek, Boggy right? Creek, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah, and all that. So I watched all these movies a lot, and um, I've always liked this movie, uh, like you, Doc. Despite itself, mm. it had it had really good. Uh, I mean, it had Jack Elam in it, um, uh, Dub Taylor, and and it had some really good. It had a good cast, and I, and I think they really did a good job. The those guys did uh, some of the uh, the extras and are the ancillary characters maybe not so much but the the um, I really really loved it but it, I've always seen it in the worst possible print <laughs> or, or copy that 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 was out there and it, it always looked terrible which I guess to some people that's part of the charm of it maybe but this this really really um, is the best I've ever seen this film look. And, and like Bill said earlier, it's probably the best <laughs> anybody's ever seen this, this film look. Synapse did a great, great, great job with it. And um, we appreciate so much uh, the copies that you sent for us to screen to watch this because it is beautiful. And it, it really, really adds to the um, adds to the movie a lot, a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I love the characters in it. Jack Elam is is great as the old curmudgeonly uh, uh, hunter, and and it's just a, it's a good Bigfoot movie. There is a lot of talking in it, um, and a lot of uh, explanation about stuff, and some flashbacks that uh, when I first watched it confused me because I thought it was really happening. But I, I was a little kid then, but, but um, uh, yeah, really good good movie. Good 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 print of this movie um and I, I enjoyed it watching it again especially when it's this clear and especially the dark scenes you can see a whole lot better and, and that kind of thing so i loved it a lot i did a lot bill mulligan sir uh when uh, did you first see this and what was your first well time? you know a couple of years ago um i was on a panel at dragon con that i i put together uh you know some graphics for um on bigfoot cinema and when i started doing that i i wondered if we'd be able to pull up enough movies to to do a whole panel and then i quickly realized i had no idea how many bigfoot movies there were so many way more than we could ever talk about and so i did come across this but the only copy i could find was like a terrible version on youtube and i started watching and i just could not get into it so i don't even know if we discussed this one uh, which is too bad because now i realize i like chad i was a huge cryptozoology fan still am and had all the Bigfoot books, went to see Legend of Boggy Creek and really liked it. Now watching it, it's a terrible movie. This is vastly superior in every way to Boggy Creek. 
Um, it just doesn't have that catchy Elmer Crabtree song or whatever it was. But it's it's a much better movie. It's got actual characters. It's not pretending to be a documentary. It's a real you know movie. Some great character actors that I've seen before. Didn't always know their names though. I've always loved Jackie Lum and his pinky eye that just sort of stays in well, one place. Uh, yeah. He turns his head completely around. That eye is still right there. Still <laughs> right there. Um, but just a just an amazing character actor. I mean, just so good at what he does. And and the the story is actually pretty good. Now, it, yeah, it is talky, and it's very much a southern drive-in movie. It's making county line with a Bigfoot. We've got a bunch of oh my god, a yeah. couple of Yankees who think it's a good idea to take their van down south to look for a monster. I mean, how many ways do you want to die? If the monster doesn't get you, the locals will. <laughs> and, and they actually do, you know. But all the characters, it's 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 pretty broad. I mean, you know, all the southern bells and the da da da. da. But, you know, there's kind of an affection there. No one's a bad guy. There's a lot of cultural clashing, but it's every it's all of us together here, you know, and, and a monster. So, you know, it, it was it was a positive thing. And, and they didn't treat the Southerners like a bunch of complete, you know, redneck ignoramuses. And they didn't treat the Yankees like total stuck up jerks. So, yeah. Now, would I have liked to have had a bit more Bigfoot? Sure. But I'm, you know, that's probably the weakest element. I mean, the monster, when you get right down to it, is just a guy in a gorilla suit. And it's probably all to the good that they don't show you a whole lot of it. Mm -hmm. It's really well photographed. I mean, that struck me. And then I, I look on the credits and it's like, oh, well, <laughs> Dean Kundi, of course it's well photographed. <laughs> you know, I mean, this guy, this was not a big paycheck for him, but he still brought his craftsmanship to it and did the best he could on what I'm sure was a much lower budget than a lot of the movies we're used to thinking of when we think of Dean Kundi. So, um, yeah, I really liked it. And I thought, that, you know, Synapse just did a fantastic job. I'm looking forward to checking out some of the extras, just didn't have time to. But as far as if you have any affection for this movie, you haven't seen it looking as good as it does here. I, I think the version I tried to watch originally was pan and scanned. Which oh, I God. hate. Oh, I hate oh, that God, so man. much. Kill and me. there's some there's some good composition. You probably if you watch the trailer, you see one of the best bits where the monster just walks. You know, we see part of it standing in front, framing the people running away or the boat. And it's it's well done. You know, when you don't have avatar money to build the world's greatest suit, you don't have Rick Baker working for you. You better be clever with how you show things. Better use some angles, use some smoke, use some mist, use, you know, use your talent. And they did. So as far as Bigfoot movies go, especially for that era in the 70s, this one goes goes up, you know, up at the top um, with a very select few others. So, very yeah, nice. that, I, I had not really thought about this movie ever. I was like, OK, so we got the DVD. I guess we got to watch it. And we'll have to say something nice because they sent it. No, no, this is honest. I, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And they just did a great job. I don't know where they found this print sitting in a vault somewhere in someone's outhouse. But Out in South Carolina somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Good um, job. Yes. Jeff Moore. All his heroes are in this movie, it seems. All right, Jeff Moore, <laughs> what was your first impression? And when did you first see Creature from Black Lake? Uh, the first time I saw it was with the, this Blu-ray. Um, no, nice. And I don't think, you know, uh, I gee, this is, uh, Synapse has done a great service because you mentioned Dean Kundi, Bill, and, or Kundi, and he, this is like when he's learning his craft, right? He's doing these drive-in movies and stuff before he ramps up to Halloween. And, uh, to not be able to see this, this is probably the first time this has been available in the widescreen aspect ratio since it was first on drive-ins. Because once it went to TV and video, they did the mm. crop and the pan thing, you know, um, which is just really killing me when you do that to a guy like Dean Cundy. So, mm. um, yeah, I love these actors, Jack Elam and Dub Taylor, Cat. They're legends in my mind. <laughs> yes, yes, we've, I knew that. <laughs> we've, we, we've done some other ones like those guys. Uh, but there's there's a great, uh, Bill, you might be interested in this, the uh, commentary on the Blu-ray. We'll just throw that up there for a second because it's 
it's worth it. The commentary on the Blu-ray is uh, Michael Gingold and Chris Pagliali. Uh, but they spend a significant amount of time talking about all the other Bigfoot movies. They oh, just good. start reeling them off. So I think you'd find that really interesting. And then there's a great, I mean, great 20-minute interview with Dean Cundey on there where he reminisces about it, talks about some of the actors and the problems. But he did the makeup. He did the creature. Wow. There's no credit anywhere, but he did a face cast of the actor. He created uh, like protruding brow appliances and stuff like that. So wow. um, it, it's interesting. I wish they would have shown a little bit more to get a better picture of it. But uh, he also talked about how, you know, they were, they were operating under the less is more. It's much more mysterious and suspenseful to not show it all out there mm -hmm. all at once. See? So anyway, um, so yeah, I, I really like these guys. Bill Thurman's great. And actually, most of the rest of the people in this, besides those five people, Jack Elam, Dub Taylor, Dennis Fimple, John David Carson, and Bill Thurman. Uh, well, Orville Bridges is the writer. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the rest of those people are locals um, that just did the part. Like the barber, they had somebody to play the barber. The guy didn't show up. So they asked the local barber to be the barber. And he does a good job. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he's a good part. Uh, so anyway, I like this a lot. To me, this is a buddy movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's these two guys, and they're joking and laughing and having these experiences. And the, and I I really like what you said too about how the South is not. They don't play them as a bunch of rednecks or people that are antagonistic to everybody from someplace mm -hmm. yeah. else. They're going around asking about the creature, and most people they either just don't know about it or they don't want to talk about it. But they're not they're not harsh about it at all. Yeah. Uh, well, Dub, Dub Taylor's was, wife is harsh about it. Yeah, she doesn't uh, like it. Well, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> and the sheriff, waitress likes to throw food at you, so be careful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sheriff tells him he doesn't want us messing around, but uh, he's he's amazingly nice about it. <laughs> And then, yeah. and then, and then at the end. they, they respond like, by no messing around with his either. daughters. So. Oh, <laughs> so, I know. Uh, well, it's what, a little touchy, <laughs> although these guys are supposed to be, these guys are supposed to be college guys. So hitting up the local seniors in high school, I suppose. I don't know. But anyway, they don't do anything uh, untoward. Uh, anyway, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It's a beautiful uh, uh, transfer and mm -hmm. uh, the extras that are on there are definitely worth hearing too and very informative. I I had a great time with it and I'm amazed that it's not more, I suppose it's not more well known because of the poor quality versions yeah. that were out there. Cundy yeah. uh, mm -hmm. even makes a comment about how impressed he is with it. So, Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Very nice. Speaking of Dean Cundy, the, there's one scene in there you know, um, where the creature has flipped the van down the hill and it shows him backlit. The yeah. creature is top of the hill backlit. Now, pe most people say that's a Steven Spielberg uh, thing. And Cundy did do that in the, some of the Spielberg movies where the, this backlighting. And, and But that I've always said and I maintain that that's the first time Dean Cundy has done that and continued to do it and make it better. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not so much a Spielberg thing as it is a Dean Cundy uh, trick, and it, it it was very effective and, and pretty kind of scary to see that yeah. big creature at the top yeah. just going, yeah, yeah. you know, backlit like that it was cool. Oh, he's a master of that stuff. Even you know, just think about the Halloween and the and the shape emerging, mm. yeah, from the closet and the, mm -hmm. the darkness. I mean, yeah, he did he did all a lot of Carpenter's films. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. He oh. also did Escape from New York. He did. Mm -hmm. uh, he did the thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think big trouble, big night. trouble, little China. Mm -hmm. And uh, once anyways. he stopped, once he stopped doing Carpenter's movies, Carpenter's movies looked completely. Yeah, um, yeah. didn't have the same quality as before. They I were they made it. He got an Oscar nomination for Dick Tracy, I think. 
So oh, wow. it's, it's a beautifully filmed film. Yeah, because he did he he did Jurassic Park for mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, and Hook. <laughs> well, he did Jurassic Park. <laughs> oh, nominated Don't speak for uh, Who Hook. Framed? I'm sorry, nominated for Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah, but he also he also did uh, uh, the Fog, and he did one of my favorite films from 1980. It came without warning. Oh, yes, on, I love that. Did Rock and Roll High School? All right, that's cool. Oh yeah. Oh really? <laughs> oh really? Apollo I love 13. Rock and Roll High School. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. yeah. Oh, there's my, tons. I could we could just talk for an hour, but my you know. favorite cinematographer, and I'm yeah. not that into cinematography, but I just I, I love Dean Cundy stuff. Mm-hmm. Didn't really well, he's still at it. He did a couple episodes of uh, the Book of Boba Fett. So. Yeah, he did. He did. Oh wow, that's impressive. He seems to have kind of retired a bit from from you know doing films. Um, you know, he's done some shorts mm-hmm. and stuff in the last few years. Of course, there hasn't been a lot of production in the last few years. Mm, true. Um, but boy, if, if if I were a filmmaker in Hollywood making stuff, you know, this is mm-hmm. the man. So, <laughs> but he's done enough. If he wants to take it easy now, yeah. get out of the rat race, and enjoy life with his grandkids, who can blame mm-hmm. him? Definitely do it. Uh, do we want to do some taglines there, Jeff, before we get Yeah, of course. Sure. Is, there, is there anything special? It's or- now time for taglines with Chad. Uh oh. There's no graphic. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Go ahead and give us some taglines. Chad. That's what I feel like right now. I got a can <laughs> through my brain. It was up there for a long time on my end. Yeah, yeah I saw it. It at all. Oh, all right. The <laughs> taglines for Creature from Black Lake are as follows A bizarre creature leaves a trail of terror in the Louisiana backwoods. Yeah, fair enough. He sure did, Ollie. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> uh, terror has reached new depths. Okay. Has it? Re- has it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Next, the, the third and final, thank God, tagline is Black Lake, Dark Night, Glowing Eyes. Something is stalking the swamp and it likes to kill people. Okay. Wow. I made that one up. I just really couldn't, I couldn't really? let you just get by with two. So, <laughs> oh, oh uh, I thought that was the best one. I was like, yeah. I got to more and he's going to hear this. And that's been taglines with Chad. <laughs> that was actually a good tagline. I've been Jeff. You missed your calling. Yeah. You did. I likes to kill. I should have hired you. Uh, there's there's the poster. That's also the front of the. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Blu-ray. And you it's guys, an awesome the poster. Awesome poster. He's much bigger in that poster than he is in real life. But okay. You guys, I know you guys have talked about the artists and other posters before. Didn't he? Isn't he the guy who also did Legend of Boggy Creek? It's uh, Ralph McQuarrie. Yeah. Oh, McQuarrie! What? Well, he's, wow, he's rather well yeah. known. Yes, he, <laughs> he went on to some other little art projects in a universe <laughs> far, far, far away. away. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh. All right, that's. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about these actors because they're they're amazing. I, I first I want to just say that I I really liked. Dennis Fimple and John David Carson. Yeah. And there's a real good story with John David Carson. We'll get to that, I'm sure. Right, Jeff? Mm. Um, I They made a great pair. And I think this is probably the best Dennis Fimple's been. He was yeah. so good in this. Mm-hmm. I really like He was so funny. and mm-hmm. They had good chemistry together. They yeah. both, uh, Well, like, he was uh, 12 years older than John David Carson. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it might have showed. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. But that's all right. It worked. I mean, so so he went to Vietnam and he went back to school later. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yeah, they should have made a series of movies with these two. They could go around and look for Mothman, go someplace out, look for a lake monster. At every stage, they check out the middle school, see if there's any date worthy uh, ladies there. <laughs> like in Absolutely. search of only fiction. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Not real. modern mo- modern fans might remember him from House of a Thousand Corpses. He was Grandpa. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think I have. Actually, a, I think I have a graphic. Uh, that has a picture of him. I would not have recognized him from right. House of a Thousand no. Corpses. Well, and he died before that came out. I mean, there he is on top. Yikes! Woo! I've seen better heads on boils. No, Jeez. and, and he's we not did. that old. I think he's sixty-one, something like that. And the scene on the bottom is from one we've already done. That's Empire yeah. of the Ants. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow! Nice. So these guys went on to keep on working. Well, they made a good pair. I was really impressed with. Them. I enjoyed them quite a bit, and I, I think that that's kind of what I was talking about. I was like. It's the characters made the movie yes, work, right? Because yes. it it is for a horror film. It is chatty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. of chit chat, mm-hmm. but I found it terrific. Yeah. I was I was impressed. Don't feed um, me chicken. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one hamburger, two hamburgers, and French fries, and a cuckoo. Uh, Jackie, there he is, Jackie Elam. Now I just want to say something. That bottom picture, that what what probably yeah. made me fall in love with Jackie Allen. That's that's from this obscure movie. I think it's called The Alpha Incident. The and I think it's the Aurora. The Aurora. Encounters? The Aurora Encounter. The Alpha yeah. Incident. Yeah, the Aurora Encounter. Thank you. And that alien is played by a little boy who suffered from that disease that causes you to age mm-hmm. prematurely. And I know this because I had a video. I don't think I have it anymore. I used to show to my classes. It was called I Am Not a Freak. And it was it had three stories of people who were born with, you know, different things. And one of them was this, this kid. And they talked about how they made this movie. And uh, Jackie Lam just fell in love with this kid and became like his best buddy. And even after the filming was over, because, you know, they, they hired this kid so they could save a ton on makeup. He yeah. just, that's exactly how he looked. It's kind of exploitive, but, you know, whatever. And the kid wasn't sure about doing it. But now, you know, once he did this, the kids at school started treating him like he was a movie star. But Elam, they they stayed in touch until his death. Of course, he, he died at a very young age. Um, and I just thought that was so touching. And it just felt right that you see this grizzled, scary looking guy. But you, you get the sense from looking at even when he's playing a bad guy, you just get the sense he's got a good heart. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently he really did. That's yeah, awesome. Uh, well, Chad, where do we remember Jack Elon most from? <laughs> Not all. Oh, my God. The, my first run across. Well, he, I saw, I remember seeing him on Bonanza and stuff like that growing up. But oh, Cannonball yeah. Run. Oh, yes. Yes. Was his greatest role ever. <laughs> no. Ever. But it, it just, he was so hilarious in that film. And uh, that's what made me love Jack Elon. I've never seen the film on the bottom, so I've, I've, but I do want to see it now. Mm-hmm. I've never heard, but but uh, his comedian—he's always playing this tough guy and always playing the bad guy. And I, so to see him in Cannonball Run as this goofy doctor that it, maybe he's a doctor, who knows? <laughs> well, it was just hilarious, hilarious. Nicholas Van Helsing, uh, that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he was—he was funny. So he's—he's he's a great actor, great character guy. Um, and and I just love him to death. In, I'm, almost anything he's in, he elevates it. I, I think. Hot lead and cold feet. You know. Yeah. That yeah. One, right? yep. he, was in, <laughs> you know, he was in the Wild Bunch, wasn't he? The Wild Bunch. You know, Sam Peckinpah's. I think Dub Taylor was in the Wild Bunch. Okay, so I got. I got uh, Sam Peckinpah liked Dub Taylor, so he mm-hmm. was in Getaway, uh, and there's another one. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, yeah. Jack Elam, did you guys see how he, uh, what the deal was with his eye? No, what, what, what <laughs> yeah, is the deal with his wall? He's a walleye, right? What is it? Yeah, when he was, well, when he was 12 years old, he was at a Boy Scout meeting and another kid threw a pencil across the room and stuck oh, him no. in the eye. Oh, oh yeah. No. That story. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> but that's, oh, my yeah. God. that's literally. I mean, that just made him... So that thing that our moms told us could happen, yeah. actually, could yeah. happen. You poke your yeah. eye out, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> it wasn't the Wild Bunch. What I was thinking of for Jackie was in... The, it's a small role, but it's the opening of Once Upon a Time yes. in the West. That, oh, it's, no. That's like the best, my favorite opening scene to almost any movie. I mean, yeah. they're sitting on the railroad station waiting for... Uh, uh, 
Charles, Charles Bronson, Bronson to yeah. kill him for Henry Fonda. But there's three guys. One of them's, I think, an Italian actor, and then the other one's, uh, or Spanish maybe, and then Woody Strode. Yeah. And Woody Strode, you know, Sergio Leone sets up this awesome repetitive thing where Woody Strode standing under the water, you know, tower, water tank, and there's water dripping down on his hat. <laughs> and so there's always this drip, drip, drip. Jack Elam sitting on the porch like thing of the of the uh, of the uh, station, leaning his chair back, and there's fly buzzing around on his face, and he keeps blowing it off. And finally, at some point, it lands on the side of the wall, and he puts his gun barrel over it, <laughs> then traps it in the gun barrel, and then sits there going and listening to a <laughs> buzz <laughs> until until so you got this buzz, then you got this drip. Drip, yeah, drip, and then there's a there's an old windmill up there going squeak, squeak, going around. It's just God. It's just a great scene. It goes on forever, and nothing yeah. happens, but it's awesome. Anyway, I'm sorry, but Jack Elam is so good. He's been in like every western series you've ever seen. He's also a guy that was in. He was in a bunch of series, but they never went more than a season. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, one right. I never heard of was an Easy Street that starred uh, Lonnie Anderson in the eighties oh. and uh, James Cromwell. Oh, wow! Um, wow! <laughs> he was, was in great. one in the sixties <laughs> called the uh, Dakotas. He was in another one called something like the Wheelers. I, I don't Texas remember. Wheelers. Can we Texas pause on Wheelers? That? Yeah. Let's pause yeah. on that just for a little bit. Anybody remember Texas Wheelers? Because hmm. I don't, but I wish I'd seen it. Um, yeah! He, yeah! Yeah! He played a cantankerous father of like four children. The, the mother was passed away, so he was raising the kids. One of one of the children was Mark Hamill. Yes. Whose older oh. brother was Gary Busey. Yes. <laughs> oh my oh, god! What? Oh my god! How do I not know about this? I know. I was like, oh, how do we see this? Oh my gosh! So he's in he's in tons of stuff like that. But one of the things that's really cool about him is. Uh, that most people don't know about. He's in some awesome uh, noir films. Mm. He was yeah, in but, yeah. uh, Kansas City Confidential, which kind of reminds me of Reservoir Dogs in that it's like there's a leader and three guys, and they all wear these masks, so they don't know who each other is, and they have different code names. And the three guys are, God dang it, I'm going to forget now, Neville Brand, Jack Elam, and Lee Van Cleve. Oh, wow. It's, it's, a, it's a great, great movie. And I then think, he's in Kiss I think Me you Deadly. Could put, oh, he's really? Oh, oh, really? Yeah. oh, that's yeah. one of my favorites. So, but I got to say, I think you could put Jack Elam in a gorilla suit, and I'd still know it's him, as long as I could see his eyes. <laughs> and that voice, that gravelly, yeah. uh, that gravelly voice of his. Oh, he really he does that great in this movie where he's... He, He's playing this drunk, and half the time, all he does is just go. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does that perfectly. <laughs> you hear every breath he takes. That middle picture, and I do this every time I see him do this move, but because <laughs> he did it when they opened the ambulance door, you know, and, and, but he just goes. He turns his head real quick, and the one eye is going. The one eye. Yeah, I yeah. laugh every every single time. I know I shouldn't laugh at it. I'll probably go to hell for it, but it's just. <laughs> The look on his face is just priceless. He knew no, he but he's, a, he's one of those guys. He's got a couple hundred credits. And uh, and actually, he was an accountant that the doctor told him, looking at these numbers back in the days of looking at them in the tiny ledger books, was going to ruin the eyesight of his one eye. Uh, so he did a deal with somebody that was having trouble getting funding and said, I'll work on the funding and do the accounting if you put me in the movies and that's how he started. Oh, nice. Good. Well done. Well done. Sir. <laughs> I love these guys. Yeah. Well, they weren't just actors to begin with, you know, they, right. Anyway. Can I just, can I just read this one quote though? This is, cause this is brilliant. Jack Lamb once described the career of a character actor. Yes. It went like this. Who's Jack Lamb? Get me Jack Lamb. Get me a Jack Lamb type. Get me a young Jack Lamb. <laughs> Who's Jack Lamb? Yeah. That's, that's the arc. <laughs> <laughs> mm. that's hilarious oh my gosh uh well let's let's move on to dub taylor well, and, who, oh, uh, very, well just very quickly doc and this is probably true of dub taylor too but uh cundy said of of uh elam that 
Uh, he was a consummate, dedicated professional that understood exactly what his part was in the filmmaking process. And he worked like hell to make that work, you know? So they understood that, like, he's he's got a good part in this movie, but most movies, a lot of movies, he doesn't, early movies especially, he doesn't do much. Mm-hmm. You know, he's just a guy in the background, uh, you know, anyway. But he gives 100%. Right, 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 right. Uh, and it's same, I would say the same for Dub Taylor. I would say. This... <laughs> okay, I, I got it. I got it up. Bill, this yeah. is the bottom picture, Bonnie and Clyde. Yes, it is. And it was that, driving I, me crazy as I'm watching this movie. I'm like, what? what? I, I'm seeing, it's like, I, I recognize, I know the actor, recognize his face. I am having a vision of, of a movie that I really love that this guy's in. And it was just going through my head. What is it? What is it? And I had to look it up. It's like, He's at the ending of Bonnie and Clyde. I've watched the, that scene. He's the so dad, right? He's, yeah, the, he's, dad. he's the dad. He's the dad who sets him up. Him yeah. Up. yeah. Right. And that look, that same that's how wardrobe. You tell. Same wardrobe. Same wardrobe and all the yeah. uh, <laughs> In his bio, it says one of his characteristics was he often just wore the top half of a union suit as a shirt. <laughs> he go. just had bib overalls over his long job yeah. a lot of times. But that you look at that picture, and I immediately know what movie that's from. That's yeah. that quick look when it, right. the, the ship's That's gonna hit the fan. When the audience and Bonnie and Clyde know it's Oops. over. You Oops. know, we get a bunch of flashes and you're like, oh god. I don't yeah, that's 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 an amazing thing. But he he uh so you know where he got his name? Dub. Yeah. His name is Walter. It's just they called him W and that got shortened. The dub. Yeah. The dub. Oh my god. The dub, but he was in, uh, this is how they crank stuff out, from 1939 to 1950, he made something like 53 movies where his character's name was Cannonball, where he was a sidekick of some cowboy, you know, repeating cowboy. And I forget the guy's name was Wild Bill something, but it wasn't It wasn't Wild Bill Hickok, it was Wild Bill somebody else. I, I forget the guy's name now. Uh, to the point of where he was called, he was billed as Cannonball Taylor hmm. for a long time. And when that when that stopped, he said, "I needed to get rid of that image." So he right. he got rid of that. But fifty movies in like eleven or twelve years, <laughs> playing mm-hmm. the same character, the same the sidekick. Well, that's before uh, you did TV, Cannonball, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he was in. Uh, you remember he was in. Uh, he had a bit part in them. Uh, the mm-hmm. ant movie and uh he had a small part in uh burnt offerings yes yeah. oh you too it's a rail rail railroad yard watchman in them hmm. yeah he probably yells something uh he's and not, he got he's, his he's... he got his first job because he could play the xylophone <laughs> they needed a guy to play the xylophone in this 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 song and dance movie and uh boom there he is and he does and i i kept reading about how there's some well-known appearance where he was on johnny carson where he shocked everybody and played the xylophone and he used he had like three you know how they would do he had like three mallets in each hand and but i can't find you know all the videos you can find online i could not find a right. video of that uh i'd love to see that um but that he's just that's who he is and he's a guy i had a quote of his too um oh i'm just an actor who can play parts and make people believe him yeah he has yeah, 261 he... credits in imdb that's amazing wow i i just he's just one of those guys you just can't miss him you know and he's great in this part he, he is, is absolutely he great, is. and you—I I, you almost feel like he's ad libbing half the stuff he's saying. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure. I'm yeah. Sure. Oh man. Well, Can you gives... imagine how boring this that whole scene <laughs> would have been if it wasn't Dub Taylor? Mm-hmm. Oh, at the dinner table. Yeah, at the dinner table. <laughs> oh my yeah. God, the look he gives Simple when he. Yeah. Oh, that's a up. great scene. Oh my God, it's like he's like. What? I'm sure what? you love. <laughs> what I do? <laughs> Just like a Yankee can't keep his word. I know. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, he was a gator. Oh my god, I love those silly movies. Yeah, gator. another Burt Reynolds. Oh, yeah, Burt Reynolds. Just uh, 
for a quick minute, the guy that plays the monster is also listed as Fred. Um, I forget his name now. What was it? Is it Dick Warlock? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, Roy Tatum yeah. says he's Fred and the creature, and there's nobody in a movie called Fred, but they said that he won a Burt Reynolds lookalike contest. Wow. This guy. So I'm thinking maybe he was that hippie guy that showed up in the first camping thing. No. Because if he all shaved the, his hair one, off yeah. and stuff, okay. he was kind of a good looking maybe. guy. Otherwise, I don't know maybe. who it was. I, oh, was and there was supposed to be a, there was a longer that. scene there, but they cut it. They cut it right at the line where Dennis Fimple says, Pahu says, I got to go and change my pants. Yeah. <laughs> 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 anyway, sorry. I'm I'm about done with all my trivia here, but uh, <laughs> are you are you sure? Well, because of, maybe not. Do we want to talk about Bill Thurman? <laughs> uh, this guy, this guy is in some of the worst movies ever because he made uh movies with Larry Buchanan. And I love Larry Buchanan's movies, but they're terrible, dreadful. These were the movies that like they just made to show on TV. They were like remakes of American international pictures that weren't that great to begin with, but were masterpieces compared to what Larry Buchanan did with them. So like, it, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember the names of the movies. Um, uh, what was the one with the giant carrot monster? It conquered the world. It conquered the world, became oh, oh. Zontar, the thing from Venus. Is that ah. John Agar? Oh, John Agar was in a lot of these. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so was this guy. He was in all of them. Mars needs women. I mean, yeah, it's um, he was in all these movies. So, you know, he's one of those guys that or a guy worked with him. John, uh, you know, Larry Buchanan worked with him, had a good time, was willing to take the low paycheck. And, just, OK, got another one coming out. Curse of the Swamp Creature. He's good in this. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he's actually he is good in this. He's the sheriff. He actually, you know, oh, man, when they pull the thing off his face, we, he's at the let me rephrase that. He's at he's at the, He's he's at the uh, the barber shop and he's got you know the mm-hmm. warm towel over on his mm-hmm. face. But you know he's the sheriff. You just know it the way he's sitting there. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah, he did a good job. I, yeah, yeah, he's that quintessential small town sheriff from the seventies B film guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's well, got that look. Yeah, and it's you know they walk into the barber shop. They get the one guy, John David Carson, to ask about if anybody knows anything about the creature or where Joe Canton is. And uh, Barber says something like, you're next. He goes, well, I'm not here for a haircut. And the barber goes, well, you sure look like you could use one. And <laughs> the, I, I, what I like about it is it's not like the kind of, it's not like the easy writer type of right treatment of long hairs. It's just a friendly Josh and treatment yeah, of yeah. long hairs. Yeah. It's kind of like what we talked about that there. And the sheriff is like that too. He's not like... Uh, He's not like uh, Jackie Gleason or yeah. uh, some of the, some of the other Southern sheriff caricatures you get in in these, or, or like uh, Boss Hog or Roscoe. You know, yeah. This guy is serious. He doesn't want people messing around his town. He doesn't want people bringing this stuff up. But he's not a total dick. You know, right? It's, mm-hmm. He'd rather these guys weren't here, and he can't wait for them to leave. But you know, he's got his, he's got enough on his hands with moonshiners and revenueers and the boys getting drunk every Friday and shooting, hollering, and yeah, you know, he's got Chicken he's got fight. a full plate. Chicken fights and yeah, um, you know, he's got a full plate. He doesn't need these two idiots coming down with a story about a monster that you know. But you know, uh, he was not- in another movie we did. Which one? I didn't realize that he was in the Evictors, the mm-hmm. Charles Pierce mm-hmm. movie with Charles. Michael Parks and. Uh, Oh yeah, I forget who else was oh. in that. Oh yeah, oh, wow. um, boy, that's been a while. I, f- I forget who the woman Pam- wasn't it. Pam- uh, Jessica Pamela. Parker, Pamela. No, no, was it, it was the, the girl in uh, Suspiria. Oh, Jessica Harper. Jessica Harper. Jessica Harper. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, I was thinking right. Pamela Harper, and I said that's not right. <laughs> Jessica. But yes. but uh, they did a bunch of. Uh, you know the same same company distributed the Charles Pierce movies and mm-hmm. this Halco distributed these and the and the McCullough movies and the Hauk movies that they did down there. Yep. If you were in the South, you saw it. I'm sure. 
Uh, there's is that the creature? That's the creature. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We don't get a lot of really good looks at him, which is probably <laughs> good. Yeah, most nice of the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's too bad because, and there's only like one quick shot of it. I think the uh, Cundy said they went to a local dentist who made dentures for all the people down there to make the teeth prosthetics, and that the mm-hmm. guy just had a great time doing that, could making something that it didn't have to look nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all snaggle tooth. Then he you know paint discolored them did some stuff to them but he said they were great there's a shot in the extras that you if you know it's one of those flash by things where you don't really see them um i wish there would have been at least one lingering shot where you could see the thing yeah i think yeah. it was decent you know yeah it was okay but i love that top shot there that's that's like an iconic bigfoot mm-hmm. shot mm-hmm. For a bigfoot yeah, movie. yeah it's yeah. just the way to do it with his um, with his uh yeah, green it's, hair hanging down it's, there. It's almost it's impossible there. for a Bigfoot suit not to disappoint. Yeah, it is. I and, mean, and, you know, is it's because we don't really know what they look like. So <laughs> right. right. The only one that's held up over time, possibly, is the Patterson, if that's a suit, which I'm still not 100% convinced. Mm, I mean, nice. And listen, I have studied that Bigfoot thing frame by frame. People have not looked at the Zapruder film with the level of analysis I have. (laughs) And my conclusion is that I am so invested in Bigfoot being real that I cannot discount the possibility that I'm seeing things that are not really there. But I swear with some of the really good copies that I've seen, you can almost see what looks like muscles rippling under the fur, which would be really, really hard to pull off. Especially at late late 60s, right? Was that when that was... And it that had being breasts, said, breasts too, right? It had, yeah. You know, that's, that being that's said, I've, I've also seen analysis of the film where people are convinced that if you look in the shadows of the tree, <laughs> there's a baby Bigfoot up there, which explains why this female Bigfoot is leading them away. And you're looking at it, it's like, you know, sometimes a shadow is just a shadow. Sometimes a, a ripple in a, in a moth-eaten suit is just that. I don't know. I don't know if it's real or not. The, the, the easiest explanation is that it's totally not real because the story doesn't add up, but by God, it, maybe it was just a pure accident, but they filmed it the right way that here it is 50 years later. And we're still yeah. arguing scientists are analyzing it and trying to figure out if it could possibly be a human. And it's like, mm-hmm. who knows? Did who I really know? do that when I said it had breasts? Hmm. Did you? Did, did, did I you do that? that? I think I you would do both I, hands. I, I She's apologize. Patty's pretty, pretty buxom. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I, I did the same thing, Bill. I, I studied yeah. that. The, they came out a few years ago with one that's more stabilized. Yes. And um, and and just, I don't know. I don't know either. It, it, if it's a suit, it's a well-made suit for the right. time. For the time, yeah. The, uh, oh, oh that, that, those were the ones uh, that the director also. Yeah, I was getting ready to talk about the director. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, um, let's let's talk about Joey Hook. Jimmy. I just want to say I love that poster. I I want that poster hanging on my wall. It is so cheap. It looks like and... a Waffle House menu. Yes, yes. <laughs> it does. That, oh my god, that is pure <laughs> Southern drive-in exploitation right mm-hmm. there. It's like in the days before Photoshop, when we just had to cut things out and slap them on, and we're only allowed two colors. So let's make them red and yellow. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Why not? Well, there was. That's I. That's not the same one, but those, yeah, a couple other movies by that guy. But it says uh, this movie, Creature from Black Lake, was released in a multi-film package in 1982 called Five Deranged Features, <laughs> and they changed most of the titles. The other movies were Dracula versus Frankenstein Ooh, under the title deranged. They're Coming to Get You, and <laughs> The Wizard of Gore under the oh. title House of Torture. Nice, nicely done. Shriek of the Mutilated, which they oh kept, my god, they kept the original title and the that's, second and the last the one greatest was greatest title ever. The Corpse Grinders under the title Night of the Howling Beast. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And what did but this anyway. one? This one became what it was like Demon of the Lake or something like that. Well, it was Demon of the Lake. Uh, there were some AKAs that I didn't find until. Uh, <clears throat> later um let's yeah, see living the... legend was the working title 
living like oh that's a terrible um, wasn't there a good Demon there were the no Lake good germans then... german titles i mean i always no they, it's just the translation of creature of the black lake everything was you could you could tell it was black yeah. shizen so, in the uh, lake in poland a polish video they titled it the silent stalker which i'm kind of like wasn't wow. real silent I, no I <laughs> no the whole, whole point that was, was the, recorded the, the screen, scream right? was one of the <laughs> was one of the high points yeah. which John David Carson's character loved playing the recording of it. Oh, okay. Speaking of, let's talk about him just briefly because of his name. Yeah. Because there was a huge, so he was an actor and he went by John Carson or Johnny Carson. Well, there was a certain uh, TV host that everybody knows, right? right. Sued him. And he had to to change his name to John David Carson. Mm -hmm. Isn't that terrible? You can't even use your own name. Yeah. You have the same name. So I, I do have another piece of trivia that I have no idea if this is re- connected or not, but I was trying to figure out where we got, where they got the name Pahu from. <laughs> what, I, I not something I'd ever heard before. So I did a little internet search. It turns out uh, there was a uh, a Native American named Pahu Katawa, which stands for Wolf Who Stands in Water, on. The Yancey Derringer show. Yancey <laughs> Derringer, anybody ever see that in mm-hmm. the fifties? He was a riverboat guy that had a Derringer up his hand. You could buy, you could get a toy that had like the spring release. Oh wow! Derringer oh, wow. come down your your arm. I'd play anyway, with that now if I had it. Bahu, <laughs> Bahu was his uh, you know Native American sidekick who he had saved his life. So Pahu was dedicating his life to Yancey Derringer. Uh, Pahu was played by a guy whose name was X, as in the letter X Brands. X Brands. Wow. <laughs> like Brand X, only the other way around. And Put your mark out, right here. Yeah. Well, his family <laughs> was from Germany, I think, or Austria. And there was a bunch of people in the town named Jan Brands. And so to tell them apart, one of them became Jan X Brands. <laughs> and they called him X to differentiate him. Oh, and when wow. they moved to the U.S., they kept it up. And whenever there would never be another X until one of them died. So this guy's name is, uh, I think it's Jan X Brands or John X Brands, something like that. And he went by X Brands. So I know that's way off the road, but isn't that interesting? Isn't it that, is. isn't yeah. that weird? I'm looking at what? His name is X Brands. Wait, that's weird. What the hell? Anyway. Now, real quick about the director um, before we move on. The director played the professor at the beginning of the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. So that's who the director was. Yeah, and his dad was uh, uh, a producer or, or uh, yeah, was his dad one of the producers? Uh, maybe. Uh, the art director was Roger Pancake. That's a cool name. <laughs> Roger Pancake. I'd love that. Yeah, man. I'd write children's Chad, books. Chad Pancake? Yeah. yeah. Chad love Pancake. Love, love that name. You need to have an initial in there to make it really make it pop, though. <laughs> what initial do you get? Uh, all right. And, of course, we mentioned Dean Cundy at the beginning. Um, do, is there any anything we want to revisit with him before we uh, wrap things up? Well, one of the things making the thing, yeah, did he mention to the other guys when they're like all these makeup artists working on a thing? It's like, yeah, you know, I've I've made some monsters in my time. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe Rob you remember O'Tain. the creature hey, from Rob. Black yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Jim McCullough Senior is the producer. Jim McCullough Junior is the writer and plays Orville, uh, the Taylor's so... grandson. Joy Hauk Jr. was the director. Joy Hauk Sr. was the guy that owned the Joy movie theater chain uh, and was co-founder of Hauk Productions, so therefore the distributor, just to straighten that out. Uh, Back to Cundy, one of the things he said was when doing these location shoots, it was... uh, fun to he he kind of would pick up uh you know talented and dedicated people along the way and that in this movie 
several of these people went on to uh, long careers in Hollywood where they were locals at the time. One was the, uh, uh, let's see, uh, well, the first assistant camera man, Raymond Stella, went on to become a cinematographer. And he did the uh, Panaglide in uh, Halloween mm -hmm. for him, you know, so he stayed okay. with him after this. Um, film editing, Robert Gordon, also long Hollywood career. Sound man, Thomas Causey, also. So Cundy talks about picking, you kind of pick these guys up along the way. I think Thomas Causey was from New Orleans. Uh, and if you look, they have, they have long Hollywood careers and, you know, well-known big budget movies and stuff so mm -hmm. it's kind of cool how that starts to pick up uh, as things go along mm -hmm. well since we we talked about the actors and the people in the film probably more than we talked about the actual film i think reinforces <laughs> our take about you know that's the characters that make this right. movie yeah. more than the horror the thing but it and it's well worth uh catching so let's go ahead and wrap it we got a lot of feedback so let's go ahead and wrap okay. this up and uh uh let's um Let's just give our recommendation and, and pick a scene that stood out. And Chad, we'll let you go first. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend this. If you're, especially if you're a Bigfoot uh, fan uh, from from back in the day, like I was and uh, still am, really. Uh, yeah, I, I give this uh, the highest recommendation I, I can. And, and make sure you get the Synapse uh, uh, Blu ray uh, yes. to watch it. That's the only way really to watch it uh, anymore. Uh, favorite scene was um, the <laughs> it was the uh, the bar scene when they're all in the bar and I, I mentioned this earlier, but they're all talking about how Jack Elam's little buddy got yeah stolen by the and that that look when he turns around it's like all it all it was missing oh. was organ music <laughs> and he just turns and looks at him like it should have been music going da da da. I, I laugh my oh ass my off when I see it. So that's when, when the guy tells a story about his wife. Is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah and it was yeah, all yeah. bullshit. Oh right. man, he gets, he's so intimidated too. And the guy's like a huge mountain of a man. Yeah. And Jake right, Allen's yeah. up in his face and he's like so intimidated. Like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, this is yeah. great. Scene. Yeah. Bill Mulligan, sir. Yeah. If that was in my face, I'd be scared too because you know you don't know. You can't look him in the eye and you don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> you don't even know which one to look at. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I give this a recommendation. If you're a Bigfoot fan, if you're a 70s, uh, you know, regional Southern horror fan, good stuff. And definitely the only only way to watch it is on this DVD. Yes. It's, yes. it's uh it's it's startling sometimes when you when you see a good version of a film and you realize a lot of the assumptions you had like the first time i ever saw a clean version of night of the living dead i realized everything that i thought about this film that they had deliberately made it look grungy like a you know like it was a documentary or something mm -hmm. is no this film was razor sharp and really well made i was just looking at crap copies um i had kind of had that feeling here too Favorite scene, I think the opening scene uh, where his little yes, buddy gets yes. snatched out of the boat because I just really do love that shot when he's like zipping away in the boat and we see the creature, just his legs and the wet hair mm -hmm. dripping down mm -hmm. and everything watching it. You know, the creature doesn't have a whole lot of, uh, we don't really get any motivation. We don't know why he's doing the things he's doing. He's just, he's a monster. This is his lake. He's territorial. And if you, uh, if you go out there, you're liable to, um, you know, just like a mm -hmm. hippo, he doesn't eat humans. He's not mating with humans. He's not, he's just, you're, you're in his spot and he's the junkyard dog and you're in the junkyard. So um, yeah, it's, it's a cool, it's, it's a really good Bigfoot movie. And that may sound like faint praise, but actually I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm surprised because I'm always happy when we find a movie that I know nothing about. And it turns out I wish I had because mm -hmm. it's pretty yeah. good. And this is yeah, right. same here. So thanks, guys. Jeff Moore, sir. Yeah, and I, I can't believe I didn't know that much about this, especially since it had, you know, the uh, double tap of uh, <laughs> Jack Elam and Dub Taylor. <laughs> but this is really good. I strongly uh, recommend that you check this out. Uh, it's not too late to order this for Christmas. At, it's available December 13th, I believe. Right? Absolutely, yes. Doc. Uh, so we're going to try to get this episode right away in time for that. Um, and uh, 
favorite scene. I love the scene where I mean, the ending has some kind of stupid twists in it, <laughs> like he's got to run back for bullets. Like he goes after the thing in a rifle with a rifle with no bullets in it. I just I don't know. So anyway, uh, he goes back and gets the bullets. But when he's in that van, that's a great scene. I love that scene. Uh, the creature attacks him. He's stabbing the arm as you know through the window, and then the van rolls down the hill and crashes. And then the creature tips it over, and it ends up starting on fire. But it's a realistic rollover and a realistic fire start. You know, yeah. It, yeah. it's you see the gas where the gas leak is and where the electrical short is, all that stuff. I just I thought that was really good. Yeah, I I. I, I'm with you guys. I, you know, I'd written this movie off probably many times just because it, you know, heard very little about it. There wasn't really a whole lot of shots of the creature. How good can it be, right? And you know, it's no. I mean, it's got a lot of really cool actors, but no name, right? I mean, mm -hmm. so you could, yeah. uh, Jeff, except for Jeff. Jeff would love the names in this, um, but I, uh, I, I'm shocked how well. I think. I think again. I think it's the quality of the Blu-ray that really sold mm -hmm. it. Um, but I had such a good time with this, and I really recommend people checking this out. Check out the the Blu-ray. I think you'll be very surprised. It is uh, you definitely have to have a taste for seventies film, where the monster is you know hidden for most of the movie, you know, which is a lot of the case, right? Especially mm -hmm. um, back in Burger today. Uh, but oh my god, it it really is. There's a charm to it. It's a southern charm, I guess, right? It really is there. Um, I got, there's a couple of favorite scenes, but I'm going to, okay. So <laughs> the boys get stuck in, in, in Dub Taylor's barn for the night, right? They're going to stay in the, in the barn. And that's when the creature shows up and, and screams. Right. And what I loved was, is that Pahu, Dennis Fimple is ready to go, man. He's, he's ready. He's out the door. He's ready to head out. <laughs> and and uh, Reeves, John David Gardner, he's, he's sitting there going, He's all excited, man. He's taping the he's taping the the screams and the yells, and uh, yeah, I just love it. And then it then Dub Taylor says, "Get in here, boys! Yeah. <laughs> That's the creature." <laughs> this was, it was great. It was and you know because it was it was real, right? It was mm -hmm. it was happening, and it felt um, it it had some of those elements that are in. Boggy Creek. I mean, you know, we talked about Boggy yeah, Creek being yeah. kind of a poopy movie, but there are some really great scenes in there that, have, you know, the arm coming through the bathroom window, right? And, mm -hmm. and some other stuff like that when they attack the, you know, really help, uh, especially when you're a young age, see met that film in your, mm -hmm. in your, in your head forever. This approaches that here. And of course the ending that Jeff will talk about, you know, is a lot of fun too. But anyway, I, I had a great time and I fully recommend it. And I just want to Thank uh, the guys from St. House Films oh, for absolutely. sending yes. it. At least. Mm -hmm. This was um, this was a joy. I was really it was surprised me that I saw yeah, one that uh, you know we hadn't done and we hadn't really no, talked about much. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, we we have to cover that. This yeah. is a perfect yeah. opportunity. And and they um, and they supplied them. So thank you guys so much. Yes. And you thank you very much. I mean, yeah. you guys did a great job. And I I if it, if I didn't like it, I would tell you. Oh yeah, but you guys did a great job. This is fantastic. You should check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't even mention, you know, when Dub Taylor's telling the story, uh, and the the thing kills his dogs. That's a great scene too. Hmm. Yeah, though, it, it is. Yeah, it, you know, he could have just been bags of stuff he was throwing, but it it yeah. was nasty. It mm -hmm. was nasty. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Check it out. Let us know what you think about it. In the comments down below. Uh, so Jeff, I'm looking over here. We got a buttload. Sure, and we a got buttload. a few. We got, got a few. few. <laughs> Feedback. Why don't you? Why don't you a whole off? buttload. A whole buttload. But but it's all there. All right. Well, the first one is uh, just kind of a general comment from Wes Diorio, uh, the guy who is ever on my prayer list for finding me the. Uh, what was it? The dumpers or the droppers from that one show with the logs coming out of the Oh, car. yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, he says, hello, Grew Crew. Not direct feedback about episode 175, but about the listener comments. One of the listeners mentioned the stone tapes and a warning to the curious. I was actually going to suggest these for either decades of war, classic era, or 70s. 
brief history, in the 1960s, BBC television began airing ghost stories around Christmas based on classic British stories by M.R. James and Dickens and contemporary writers like Nigel Neal. These short stories turned into short movies are fantastic. You can find great versions on YouTube. I highly recommend A Whistle and I'll Come to You as a great starting position. You will not be disappointed. Thanks wow. for another great episode, hmm. Wes. Um, yes, wow. in fact, uh, Nick Gadman recommended Oh Whistle and I'll Come to You to me a while ago and I watched it and it is it is a typical English ghost story, that creepy yeah. AF, man. It is. Anyway. All right. Lone Wolf, On the Ketchup Journey Still, episode 129, Grave of the Vampire. Lone Wolf says, Michael Pataki... Pataki was also in Halloween 4 as the doctor who argues with Dr. Loomis in the beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. His other famous role is Dolph Lundgren's manager in Rocky 4. Yeah. He's the guy that says, whatever he hits, he destroys. Yep, he was. He was good in that, too. Yeah, yeah. Michael uh, Grave of the Vampire. Wow. We did that. That was yeah. awesome. Now some more recent <laughs> ones. Episode 176, some kind of quick hitters. Ralph Miller, he looks like he just got hypnotized by the Brainiac. <laughs> yes. Uh, we did the Brainiac on the uh, classic era with Ralph as a guest host. So uh, he knows what he's talking about. And I think he's commenting on the picture of the guy that, that we had in the, uh, the, the cover. Yeah, the, yeah, the picture ball image. Guy. Yeah. Uh, and he did. He absolutely did. Uh, David Ruggiero, who is the one who originally suggested it to us. Yes, with, I don't know, a couple dozen exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> if thanks only they were donuts. Thanks for the episode, guys. Donuts. I, found, <laughs> I found it hilarious that you all hated it, except for Die. Laugh out loud. And thanks to Jeff for remembering that I asked for this so long ago after seeing it at Raleigh's Alamo. Oh, wow. Nice. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, David. David. So, uh, from Andrea L. And this is still about Blue Sunshine. I think this is a new commenter. It's reefer madness for LSD pre just say no era hysteria. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I don't know why. I, mean, I was thinking about reefer madness. Uh, at one point in related relation to this, I found it hilarious in a "it's so bad it's good" kind of way. Yes. Yes. Absolutely, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. Uh, Evil Genius on Blue Sunshine. Yes, this is another movie with a great idea but poor execution. There are some good scenes, but I agree that the negatives outweigh the positives. Funny, Doc mentioned The Invited. I just watched that the other day. That movie was just like Blue Sunshine. Oh, really? <laughs> Decent idea that could have worked, but just fell flat in poor oh my execution. God. I'm invited. The cat monster is hilarious. Uh, I just got to do it one day. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. 80s. Uh, let's see. Where was I? Uh, Chad White says, great review, everyone. Applause. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. And Kayla Nian says, oh, shit. I haven't heard these <laughs> words in a long time. I think she's referring to Blue Sunshine as uh, a, that's a yeah. kind yeah. of LSD is kind of the way I was taking it. <laughs> hey, Kayla, thanks. Be yes, Kayla. Thanks, Kayla. Yeah. And a couple on The Legend of Lizzie Borden, mm. which just came out a couple days ago. Uh, Lone Wolf said, this was an amazing discussion, guys. I've never seen this film before, but I've been going on a TV movie horror binge, and coincidentally, this came up. I recently finished Trilogy of Terror, Duel and uh, Salem's Lot, and yes. I've been thinking this will be next on my list. Definitely. Seeing these pictures of Elizabeth Montgomery made my eyes water up a bit <laughs> because I watched Bewitch Returns in the early 90s, and yes, she's like a more sophisticated version of Jeannie. Yes. It, it hurts to know she passed so soon. I'll, I'll definitely seek this one out because the Lizzie Borden story was always intriguing to me. I appreciate it, Grew Crew. Awesome. You're it's welcome. on uh, Prime, oh, Amazon Prime, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. Need to do is. more. They need to do more TV horror movies. Did you? Did you, uh, did you get a chance to watch that doc? I did. I loved it. I really, at this point, I was I was too ill to. I, I was under. It was. That day. Yeah. But I. It was so good. It was so good. And I wanted to ask you guys. You talk about the 
the the partial nude scene. Yes. Was that the was that in the states cut or was that in the European cut and brought it and for this particular one that we watched? I I feel like I feel like actually the states one had the nudity, but you had to have the ability to like freeze frames to to see it. <laughs> it was so fast it got past the sensors. Yeah, I, th I think there was a, a longer one at European. Yeah, not, I feel not like a lot longer, but. Uh, have a year longer one, but I wasn't able to find it. And yes, I did look for it. So because because I do remember it was controversial for that yeah. at the time. But she got like nominated for everything. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Really good. yeah. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> no, and, and I I don't know if that's the first time. That's the first suggestion or movie that I saw that suggesting that she took all her clothes off and whacked the heck out of them, and then. So interesting idea. All right. Yeah. Uh, evil genius on the legend of Lizzie Borden. Growing up in Massachusetts, I am quite familiar mm, with the bet. legend of Lizzie Borden mm -hmm. and the Salem witch trials. I never saw this version of the story, but the moment you said Elizabeth Montgomery, I put it on my must see list. Excellent. Nice. nice. Have to let us know what you think evil. All right. That's it for tonight. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Kayla, Chad, Lone Wolf, Evil, uh, Andrea, Evil. David Ruggiero, <laughs> Ralph Miller, and Wes. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Thank yes, you very much. A lot. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, we need to we need to find more more TV movies to do. We'll have to we'll have to do some searching. Okay. Yeah. And grab some. I like to get some maybe some obscure ones. I mean, we haven't done Duel yet. Right. Uh, we right. did. We did do trilogy of terror. We did do Night Stalker. Mm -hmm. and, Salem's uh, Lot. Salem's Lot, of course. Night, Didn't we Strangler. Do Night Strangler too. Yeah. Night yes, Strangler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there's there and, and gargoyles. We did gargoyles. Yeah, there's we plenty, did do gargoyles. Yeah, plenty out there though. That I mean, that's still, just the beginning. we still need to do uh, a series of um, the Night Stalker. Maybe yeah. one or two. Wait, that would more. be yeah, because it's be only fun. like you know, twenty episodes, right? So, I've been yeah, watching. Yeah, uh, Kino put out the the series in Blu-ray right after they did those Trilogy of Terror and the Night Stalker and Night Strangler in Blu-ray. Now the series is on Blu-ray where it was on mm. DVD before. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's extras on all of them. There's commentaries from different people that just Whoa. apparently were fans of the series. So. Oh, we need to get our cool. hands on that. Oh my God. You have it, I take it. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Booger. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to I'm, do that. I'm inspired by the Black Saint <laughs> yeah. to own yeah. as much physical media. I, I'll never, I do not aspire to be Jerry Chandler, though. I'll, oh. never, <laughs> I'll never have what Jerry Poor Chandler. Poor Jerry. Yeah. Well, uh, Chad, this is, yes. your, home, your homework is to make that happen. Find us a way to make that make that happen. Okay. Consider it did. You got it, bud. Now, speaking of Chad... Jeff, what's our next movie? Well, this is Chad's pick. It is Count Dracula oh. from 1970 or 1973 or any time in between, depending on what country you you live in. <laughs> directed by it's directed whatever it's by. whatever time Klaus Kinski says it was. Mm. Right. Yes, and you've got to believe him. Mm. At least Jess Franco one. or Jesus Franco? Did he or? I, you know, I don't know how. Yeah, I've never heard him say anything but Jess, but in the credits, yeah. it's always Jesus. Christopher so this Lee. Is a, this is our Herbert first Franco Lund, movie. Klaus yeah. Kinski. Mm. Yeah. And it's streaming like everywhere on all the free apps. All so free apps. Tubi, Canopy, Roku, Plex, and Cracker sure. are all. Of free. course, it won't. It won't be by the time we go to cover. I know that's <laughs> the way it always works, man. <laughs> always works. I'm pretty sure it'll always be on YouTube. Oh, yeah. well, oh probably uh, probably there too. Yeah. All right. We talked about this before the show, but you said there's only a few Jess Franco movies worth watching. What's what's uh, another well, like Daughters of the Devil? That was no, not that was it. I like his early ones like Diabolical, Doctor Z, um, and and you listen, the man the man was not untalented, and there's a lot of good um, film critics like you know uh, Tim Lucas who see a lot of great stuff in it, but. Uh, a lot of people who like his stuff say you can't just watch one. You got to watch all of them. Well, there's 180 of them <laughs> and a lot of them are, I don't, I don't know. I mean, a talented guy, but he was working with really low budgets and he took a lot of shortcuts and they just, they most of them feel like they were filmed without a script. 
Just sort of like like film jazz. Just mm, no, yeah. and I'm not a big jazz fan. So I, it, it's it's just not something that floats my boat. But I will say this is one of the most literal Draculas that has ever been put on film. And you get to see Christopher Lee actually happy doing Dracula for mm. once. So uh, there, there's a lot to there's a lot to recommend this one. I'm trying to, you know, I've I've actually seen the Castle of Fu Manchu. <laughs> oh my God, that is one of the whoops. whoops. That was. And, oh. Well, there's terrible. a lot. There's a lot of reasons that movie's I'm terrible. Looking at, so, and who knows? IMDb has the best to worst movies of just Franco. Oh. The Diabolical Doctor Z is ranked first by whoever did this. Okay. Maybe it's the uh, ranking. I think. Oh, it's by their ratings. I think. Hmm. Then Eugenie Desaad. Okay. The awful, uh, the awful Dr. Orloff. Yeah. I mean, look, personally, I admire Jack the guy. The um, he and, he and uh, his his wife made, uh, Lena Rome made movies their entire lives together. They were deeply in love. It's just that some of the movies are just, uh, yeah, I don't know. But but you know what? He did it his way. I, we'll have a lot to talk about. Like I mean, you know, four or five glad we're a year, man. He was... Yeah, I, I'm glad we're doing this because it's a chance to talk about him. And he is a really important figure, I think, in horror. Not necessarily something I'm crazy about, but, you know, it's it, attention must be paid to someone like that. What about, uh, is it Vampir Vampiros Lesbos? Is that the one? Yeah, that's a pretty good one. That's yeah. a pretty good one. And he you works know, with... He worked with Christopher Lee quite a bit because he also did the Bloody yeah. Judge. He did. He did a lot of there. stuff in a lot of different genres, and um, yeah, hmm. he I'm did a lot of porn. Too. We're not going to be doing any of those films, but dang it, <laughs> Dracula Prisoner of Frankenstein. What a great title! Oh yeah, that's a weird one. Oh my god! So is that? Yeah. Well, it's got a werewolf in it too. Mm-hmm. Ilsa the great. Wicked Warden is that is that one of the oh god that's not one of the good ones it's not even a real uh, Ilsa movie it's just a woman in prison movie and it had the actress who played Ilsa so they just said oh her name's not Wanda anymore it's Ilsa succubus what'd you say succubus <laughs> <laughs> that's okay that's hellhole bad. women yeah that's pretty bad. I don't know. Hey, listen, you know, How many I got, of these did you see, Bill? I've seen a lot of these. I've seen a lot of these. Women movies. in Cell Block 9. Yeah. Oh, my God. See, I've never liked the women in prison genre. So. There's a pattern forming here. I know. There's yeah. a well, the, at least at the ones that I noticed. I, there's a... <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, this is going to be a first and yeah, uh, yeah. probably a start of a, a huge conversation about this prolific director. Yeah. All righty. Good or bad. <laughs> All right, guys, this was a lot of fun. Be sure to check out The Creature from Black Lake. Let us know what you think. Uh, make suggestions. We'd love to hear what you guys yes. would like for us to cover. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, you know, as as we keep going, the more obscure movies we find, uh, we still have a couple of big hitters out there waiting for special episodes. Mm -hmm. and, and as we've proven, we're willing to do almost any we, we, yes. thing. Yes, yeah. and Chad will usually bring the crappiest of the crap to us. So yeah, thanks, keep Chad. up the good work, Chad. Blood sucking freaks. Oh wait. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the, the Paul? You Hattie loved it. Was, it was supposed to be a good. Um, the, were, the cry of the werewolf. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's more of those. There's more. Of those. There we got are. a bunch of natural. Yeah, there's go. more. There's, there's, and Bill, there's what? Did you cover the werewolf versus the yeti? I mean, do you put yeti in Bigfoot movies? Is is that the same for you or? Is that an well, entirely so different? One of the ones we have to do, if it ever ends up on a stream, we've got to do Shriek of the Mutilated, which is one okay. of my favorite terrible movies. A movie so bad, I can't believe Chad well, has recommended it. Actually, <laughs> actually, uh, I had that on my list because that was one of Santos' top oh, yeah, ten from that two-episode thing, memory. Doc, you and mm -hmm. he did. Yes. Uh, but he loved it for the exact same reason Bill is pointing out. Yeah. Oh, I watched it. I. Oh. <laughs> It's horrible. Did you get did you get the Blu-ray to so you can see everything? I did else? not. I did not. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> is there one? <laughs> I don't know. It's that's oh, gotta be one God. of those movies. There is the Blu-ray will there. just make it even worse. Like it's it, it, it's like watching a, a movie like that on Blu-ray. You're seeing now you're seeing all the moles and uh you know imperfections Stop. that Stop. somehow escaped you before. It's like, oh wow. <laughs> so yeah, but we'll do it. Yeah, we have to. We it's have to we gotta out. do that one. There's a lot of, well, we'll get to them. We'll get to them all. 
We'll get it, we'll get, it, we'll get to him eventually. Right. All right, Jeff, Bill, Chad, thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. As always. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's great seeing yes, you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for uh I don't I'm lining this up. I don't know how you worked it, but this was awesome. Yes. And, and thanks uh, to uh, Christmas is coming up. So you guys, if uh, if I don't see some of you before then, I should see you before then, but uh, safe journeys and happy all holidays happy and Christmas. All that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Christmas is on a weekend, so we should be able to Okay, good. Unless you're Unless you're driving on a Wednesday, Bill. Well, you know, I'll it. work it out. Yeah, so, <laughs> so which Bob Clark film with uh, Christmas trees are you going to be putting in your Blu-ray player this uh, this holiday season? Well, you know what I did? Which I watched <laughs> A Christmas Story Christmas. Oh, I haven't watched that yet. We've been waiting for Christmas to do that. We're going to do a double feature. Um, but that's, uh, that's the, but there's, what's the You'd other? You'd be better Bob off Clark watching Black What's Christmas? the other one? Let's yeah, do Black, Christmas. Black, Christmas. Black Christmas. Black Christmas. Black Christmas. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, let's get out of here. Let's say good night. Night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs>